I have been getting so inspired by studying this book on Japanese book binding. It's by a master craftsman that learned from his father-in-law who um, this goes back generations and he uses all of the traditional book binding techniques and um, I just love the simplicity and the style and um, I've been really enjoying this. The only thing about this book is it's in black and white and so I started looking at what kind of papers did the Japanese use back in the day and he mentions them and then you can kind of see them but they're in black and white and once I started really delving into antique Japanese prints I fell in love and I had to make a kit. These are all uh, Japanese designs dating from the early late 1800s to 1902. This is a publication that came out I don't know if it was monthly or annually I'm not even going to begin to pronounce it. All of the images are in the public domain and they're from that era so they are antique and there's over 300 images that I was able to get my hands on and manipulate in Photoshop because I wanted a kit. So this is just the first of many. This was my, my I wouldn't say my favorite 10 but I was trying to go for a certain color palette with this one so that everything in the kit matches and goes you can use everything in the kit interchangeably so this is kind of a, a kit that's in the blue and yellow family and a lot of florals but they're just beautiful and when you look at these I mean to me this does not look like something over 120 years old this looks like something this looks like art deco or something more modern a lot of these do and so there are they're still they're timeless they're just beautiful so I I'm going to show you the kit and then we're going to make a few things I was in I have a couple of um, inspir and I had some more inspiration <laughs> don't you love when that happens when something just inspires you and it snowballs and you can kind of keep going with it for a time so I have some ideas for this kit let me quickly show it to you let me hold them up here look at this one this would make a gorgeous book cover gorgeous book cover either side and I actually have a friend in Japan I contacted her I don't even know if I have this upside down right now I think I think maybe it goes like this I'm not sure no maybe like this I don't know <laughs> I contacted her her and asked her what this what this says but um, it's I think they're 11 hours ahead of us it's the wee hours of the morning right now and she hasn't gotten back to me yet so um, hopefully she will and I'll put it in the Etsy listing so I'm not sure what this says but if it's 120 years old I'm quite confident it's not a swear word or something awful that I wouldn't want <laughs> to to put in my shop <laughs> But it's so beautiful with these leaves. This would make a very pretty fall fall um, journal too. Look at this one. This is like something you would have seen in the 60s. Not 120 years ago. They were so ahead of their time. So beautiful. I love every one of these and I cannot wait to start working with this. Look at this one. Beautiful florals. And again, more of the yellows and the blues. Here's another one that goes really nicely with, maybe it was by the same artist, but it goes really nicely with this one. The, the leaves tie in with one another. 
Now, some of these, th this whole book was very aged, it, it, obviously because of the it's a hundred plus years old. So the pages have browned, and I I suspect that this was probably more of a white back in the day. Some of these I tried to get rid of the brown and go ahead and made them white. I adjusted the hue and did a bunch of stuff in Photoshop to try to get rid of that aged patina, but some of these I kept it. Um, this, this, who knows what color this was 120 years ago. So I just kept it because I think it gives it that nice vintage look. Same with this one. And these, I wanted these two to be able to tie in with one another too. Look at how beautiful that is. It it um it almost looks like wallpaper, like vintage wallpaper. This is another one that I left the aged patina, but look at those lovely birds on those swirls. Those would be fun to fussy cut out too. And this is one of my favorites here. Again, more of the leaves, more yellows. This is more of a green. So that's the first kit, and then I th I couldn't stop. I did another kit, and I did washi tape with all of these images. This one's an add-on to this kit. This one's only a buck, um, because uh, this is I'm gonna. I think I'm going to have several Japanese kits in my shop. I'm loving it right now. I think they're gorgeous. They're timeless. Even if you're not doing a Japanese theme, these are still. These are still just beautiful to work with and to collage with. So so I did some washi tape too. I think in the next kit I'm going to try to do maybe a kimono or a, a vase, like a Ming Dynasty. Is Ming? Ch no, Ming is Chinese. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but I did see some images in there that were that, that shape, that antique shape of a vase that you see in Asian countries. So I'll probably have some more images and a little more Japanese print when my friend Iori gets back to me and lets me know what what uh, I'm putting out there what what this says because there are some other ones with some really cool Japanese print so the first thing I wanted to do today is inspired from we're redoing my kitchen right now and I came across some chopsticks and you know how when you go to the restaurant chopsticks are in those little paper holders and this one was folded really really in a real pretty way and I thought hey that is a perfect pocket for a tag for our junk journals so I'm gonna try to recreate that today that's one of the first things I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna try to show you some other things too uh, I'm going to either in this video or the next I'm gonna make an a um, Japanese accordion fold book using some old techniques that I've learned about. I think I'm going to use this one. I like this. Now, depending on how you print this, these most of these these images are 8 by 10. And so a little white border is going to print unless you uh, adjust your print to be borderless and have it fill the, the page. You can do that. But I don't mind just cutting off these white borders. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I cut off the white borders and then I cut this in half so that I ended up with a piece that is approximately five inches across. Um, you can have it be whatever width and length you want. This this is not this technique is not dependent on let me get some stuff out of my way here. Is not dependent on what a size. It doesn't have to be a big huge sheet of paper. So um the first thing you have to do is turn it over so that the white side is up and then I like when I'm doing a folded book technique or a folded pocket technique I like to make my creases first it's just um, just seems easier to me so the first thing you're gonna do is fold it in half this way you do have to start with a rectangle so any rectangular piece of paper will do then you're gonna take each side and fold it into the middle. So there's the middle crease. Take the top and fold it down to the center. 
take the bottom and fold it up to the center. Okay, so now this is what you have and you have four creases. Then you're going to take your upper right corner and fold it down to this first crease. and then take your bottom right corner and fold it up to this center crease. And then you're going to take and just fold the whole thing up like this. You're just going to close it up. One, two, three. And then there you have a cute little pocket. Two pockets if you want to put something here and something here. Also on the back if you want this to be pocket a pocket if you're not gluing it onto your journal. So I think I'm going to actually open this back up. Let's see, how would we glue this? Yeah, I'm going to open this up and just put a little bead of glue along the bottom. and you don't have to do this part. Just so that the bottom is closed up. And there you have it. You have one or two pockets. And I also thought with this kit, let me see, let me put it here. I think that my embossed sheets, I always have some of these on hand in, in white and ivory. And I think that they look really pretty with, with um, this paper. I just think it goes really well with it because this, this particular one up here is ribbons and ribbons and flowers and this one down here I just got is is really pretty embossed leaves so it goes really good with this so maybe we'll just take um, we'll put one of these as a tag inside so we need to cut one and three quarters by let's say let's say five and a quarter one and three quarter by five and a quarter And there we go, that's really pretty. And let's let's decorate this a little more. Let's see. I think we can use another strip of this and put it down here. That would look pretty. And even fold it around. We could do that, and then maybe we need a little, little something up here just to decorate that. Um, let's see. We'll take a piece of paper that we cut. And maybe get some of that blue up here. do that. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty. And let's see, do we want something else right here? Maybe let's, where's my washi tape? <clears throat> Maybe a little piece of this would be would ni be nice and stand out. Let's get a piece of that. And we should maybe tear it. 
Yeah. I like that. I like to bring, br let's bring out the blues there. Bring out the blues. I should uh, play you s something on the piano here, and uh, I should play you some blues here. Maybe I'll do that. There, <clears throat> there, that's really pretty. The colors are so gorgeous. And then we've got, again, we can stick something in there if we want, but I haven't decided what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with this yet. So there's our chopstick holder. <laughs> that's where I got this idea. And there's a pocket there. You can also put something in the front here if you wanted to have more than one thing in here. If you don't want like the white, then you can put a piece of scrapbook paper in there or uh, print double-sided when you print. But there's our first, there's our first little Japanese pocket. The second thing I wanted to do with this kit is to make an accordion book. Accordion books are traditional Japanese books and they were originally used in part by um, for calligraphy. So I want to make an accordion book. I've shown these before but not quite in the style that I'm about to make with a with a cover. So um, choose a paper or two or three you, you can use as many papers as you want. I'm just going to use one for demonstration purposes today. And um, I'm really in love with this one. I think I'm going to do this one. Okay. So trim off the edges and then cut it in half this way. Okay. So, oh, this paper is so pretty. So then take each one of these and fold it in half lengthwise like this. If you want a a book that isn't this big, you can you can fold it in half again. Like this. But I just want this size. I think this is a nice a nice size. So we're going to just do two of these. Actually, no, I think I want four of these. Okay, so let's get another. These all go so well together that, um, yeah, let's do that one.
Okay, then what you want to do is to make your accordion, you need to you want to turn these over and tape them together so that you have one long sheet. Now, you can use masking tape, you can use washi tape, you can use glue and kind of, well, no, you couldn't fold it over because that would be the wrong size, but you can use whatever tape you want. If you use washi tape, though, it's not going to be as durable. Washi tape doesn't s tend to really last for a long time, so I'm just going to use regular scotch tape. The Japanese would have worked with one long sheet of paper. They would, didn't have to do this taping. So this is more of a modern way of doing this, obviously. I probably should have alternated these. Yeah, let me do that. Let's see, can I get this off? Uh, nope. <laughs> And one more. Okay, let me just cut off some of this excess tape. One more little piece right here. I missed a spot. Okay, and then you fold these into an accordion. So this way, and then this way, and this way. I did not do a very good job of taping or measuring. Oh, you know what? Oh, you know what happened? Um, this one, this one here, I printed borderless, so it's just a tad bit longer than this one. That's what I did. But yours, if you printed them all the same, will be will be like this. You won't have that showing. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll keep going with this. So this is your book, okay, like this. But what I'd like to do is put um, put a cover on. So let me climb under my desk here. Okay. I like the flimsy cardboard that comes in a paper pack on the on the top of it is the cover of a paper pack for something like this. I don't want thick thick chipboard. So let's cut this at well for you it's gonna be if you print with border well you better measure it yourself. <laughs> I don't want to give you measurements because it's gonna vary depending on how you printed it. For me it's five and a half by um, four and an eighth, and we need two. And I actually added about an eighth of an inch because I'd like the cover to be just a little bit bigger than than the book itself. And then um, 
let's doesn't matter which side we use because it's going to be glued down. Let's go ahead and cover this with some pretty paper. And I think this would look really pretty on the cover. So I'm going to cut two of these to fit the, these. Actually, you know what? While I was off camera, I forgot I had this. I'm going to use this for my covers. So I want to use the Japanese lettering. So what I'm going to do is put um, tape on here, adhere it to where I want it, and then cut my paper. I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to use my tape runner for this. put it in the center here so we make sure we get those Japanese letters. And then I'm going to take these to my trimmer and cut them out. Okay, so this is what I have. Um, I think I will ink the edges very lightly. And then you either glue or tape whatever, now that it's nice and rigid, tape that or glue it to the top and bottom. So I am going to use my tape runner again because you know I hate glue and glue hates me. I'll have it all over my desk if I don't. <laughs> and. I wish I knew which way this goes. If you read or write Japanese, you're probably screaming at me right now. No, that's upside down. And again, these are too short um, because I, I printed, I didn't print them the same, but you'll get the idea. Okay, there. All right, so there's your, there's your little accordion book. So pretty. And um, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six pages technically. If you want more, then just keep going with that, with taping those strips together. But this is how the Japanese did an accordion book back in the day. Of course, you can also um, do one of their bindings, a ledger binding, where you sew here. And, but you have to you have to crease here and then it, and it can open this way. I'll do a tutorial on that maybe one of these days. But um, yeah, so pretty. Have no idea which way this goes. <laughs> so there's those two items. And then the last thing is I just wanted to now we have some scraps and some things that have been kind of cut apart and folded and um, let's just make some ephemera with this. So while I was off camera I realized that I actually have a Japanese stamp set. Um, it's I think this says eternal friendship. This, that's what this is called, eternal friendship. 
It's from the Personal Stamp Exchange. This is from 1999. That's <laughs> I've been stamping a long time, um, and I don't remember what was here, and unfortunately it's missing. But I thought I'll definitely use this. This is a little too too busy for what I have going on here, but I'll definitely use this and maybe stamp this on some fabric. Um, I also want to use the uh, remainder, oh this isn't, that's white paper, whoops. I want to use the rest of this cardboard to maybe make some elements that can go inside of a journal. And also my scrap bin is getting way too thick. I have got to um, find the time to sit and make some stuff with this. So I want to use a little bit of this up. So this one's already cut out from when I was cutting the book covers. Let's just start with that one. Get this stuff out of the way. There's the book. Should probably decorate the cover of this too. Yeah, sometimes I can't stop decorating. I just have to keep. I just keep going. We'll we'll leave that. Um, let's put these little scraps aside. We've got that. We've got scraps from here. We've got more washi tape, and we've got this stamp. Okay, so. I think what I'm going to do is cover. I'm going to cover this side. I'll decide later what I'm going to do with the white, depending on what I do with it. If I put it in a journal, maybe I will ink this up and do some lines and have this be a journal card. But I, it might end up just going in a journal. I, I don't know. I'm only going to do one side today. So let me just cover this real quickly. This might be pretty too. I showed this in another video. Sometimes when I'm bored, I'll just sew ribbon up, up paper, and then you can you can cut it out and use it. And that's that's in my scrap bin. It's a different shade of blue though. Got some of that. Here's some coffee stained paper. Yeah, that'll at least cover the base. So let's let's see. use my glue stick for this. This part you don't have to think about all that much. Just use what you've got on hand. Use up your scraps. Sometimes I think when you don't think about it too much you come up with the most fantastic artwork. Actually I kind of like Nah, I'm going to go ahead and, co ahead and cover it all up because that this is shiny. So yeah, I'm going to cover it up. Then we have some German vintage book page here. It's going to go down here. Now we get to the fun part where it's just glue stick and tearing. My favorite thing to do. I love the way that's all water stained at the bottom. Actually, you know what? Even though that's glossy, I kind of like it. I think I'm just going to leave it. I was going to cover it with this, but um, I'm just going to leave it. Okay. 
And let's see what we have for little colorful snippets now. Maybe I won't have that whole thing showing. Maybe I'll, I will put just a little bit more. Yeah. Oops, got to take the lid off. <laughs> I'm so deep in thought here, I wasn't even paying attention to what I'm doing. Okay, now we can see what we want for color. I like that. So we've got this scrap, several, several of these. We've got some more of this, but I've used this a lot this morning, so I'm going to set that aside, I think. Got more of this. We've got our washi tape. Oh, got another strip of this. I think I'm going to set this aside and, well, I'm going to use this. I like that. Probably if I wasn't on camera, I would have gone ahead and done the base back here too, done all my little scraps. I'll probably do that off camera. I don't usually leave it just white like that, but I'm trying not to have this video be too long. Want something torn on there. And then I want to use this stamp. get out my little bin of fabrics here. These are, I'm working on library pockets, guys, I promise. <laughs> I'll get them back in my shop someday. Here, I'm going to take a piece of this muslin or, let's see, Yeah. I'm going to cut a little piece off of this. So I've shown it before, but in case you're new, any of my little any of my little um, scraps of textile go in here so that I can just pull them out when I need them. I love the ends of bolts of cloth because they sometimes they look like that. Those are my favorite. Oh wait, here's a smaller piece. It's already cut. Yeah, let me use that. Okay. And actually, these library pockets belong on my desk. So it reminds me I need to work on those. <coughs> and I want to use this stamp. Put this here so I don't stamp on my desk. Cool. That'll work. And of course you know me, neat freak. I clean my stamp right away. <laughs> Some people don't. It's okay. But I at least get the ink off. Okay. Okay. 
I like that. I'm going to use glue for this. If you have trouble making collages and figuring out how to do this kind of thing, I suggest you watch my video. Um, I think it's called Collaging Basics, and I talk about the rule of thirds. And it makes collaging so much easier once you know that simple technique. And so many people have been so complimentary of that video. I really appreciate it. It really makes me happy when I've helped in some small way with something that somebody was struggling with. It just really makes me happy. So thank you for all your comments on my videos, guys. All right, there's that. And I think I think I'll leave that one be for now. I was thinking maybe I could put a little piece of white there to break it up. But I'm just going to leave it. Ink up the edges a little. Okay, we have more of the cardboard. So let's make it a couple more using these scraps. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to I want to use the stamp and just get a little Again, I totally don't know if I'm doing this upside down or not. <laughs> but I just want to There we go. I think that's what it needed. All right, now I'm done. I feel better. Like I said, I have a hard time stopping decorating. Okay, I'm going to make a little layered um, tip-in or tag or whatever you whatever you want to call it. Um, this one I, I cut, it's four by six and I took out a larger piece of of the ribbons and flowers because I thought that, that would look really pretty as the base. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Let me just crease so I know where I'm going to fold it, I mean cut it. These are scraps that I wasn't able to use because the the um, Sizzix cut cut through it. I had too many sandwiches in there, so I wasn't able to use them for tags. But I definitely can collage with them. I'm going to use glue for this. So my husband restores vintage electronics and he has some museum pieces actually that he's working on right now, museum synthesizers and some of the um, vinyl is coming off and he's always up here looking for to see what kind of glue I have. <laughs> so now I'm having to share my glue with my husband. <laughs> so I just bought him um, a couple of bottles of of uh, his own tacky glue and I got him some some actual book book paste PVA glue so that um, I'm not wondering where my glue is all the time <laughs> okay so we got that on the bottom and then I have this old scrap of 
tea stained paper or coffee stained. I think this is paper I was experimenting with burning it actually. It's really super brittle. Don't try that at home folks. <laughs> There's a lot of experiments in my little scrap box there, but they're awfully fun to use. They all have a purpose, right? Okay, and I also have this kind of an echo print eco print paper but actually I bought this in the 1980s and I wish I could find more there's an, a real leaf in there and I don't know where I got this paper but um, I haven't been able to find it I think I'll go ahead and put that there because it kind of looks like Japanese handmade Japanese paper Okay, and then can use some of this washi. What else do I have for scraps? I don't have a lot of scraps yet because I haven't really been messing with this kit too much yet. Do, 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 do. That looks nice with that. Let me cut this up. See, I don't even feel guilty cutting into this because I could just go print some more if I need it. I think that's really pretty right there. Maybe with a little bit of that vine, I think I'll do that. Super pretty. We could cut some more out. Put some at the top. Might put that there and then do my stamp again right here. Yes, I like that. I really love these leaves. I think we could continue adding, but I think, you know, in the Japanese style, we're kind of keep things a little simple. I did find this. I forgot that I had this. This was this is in my birds kit. 
Birds Digital Kit. I forget the name of it. And um, that would be pretty as a journal card on the back. So I think I'll do that. And let me cut off the excess. So we have two. I might end up not liking that shiny part. Could put another piece of... Yeah. I'm going to have to do that. Come on, glue. I hate you. I hate you, glue. actually going to leave that sticking up for now. Okay. Hmm. I think I want to make one more thing with you today and I want to use this paper. I mean, it's all so pretty that I doesn't, ooh, yeah, let's, let's use this one. Now, this one. Okay. Okay, this is so gorgeous. I just cut it four by eight, and then I'm just going to fold it in half. And I'm going to cover the inside just with some old book pages, I think. If I can find one big enough, I have a ton of scraps like this. I need to find a nice big book page. Let's see. Or music paper. I have some music paper. Yeah, I could go get a book page, but I really, really need to use this stuff up. So, all right, I'm going to cut that down to four inches. I found this really cool vintage book called Tony's Scrapbook, and it just had little poems and stories in it that he liked. <laughs> Glue stick. Oopsie. Because with the, the beauty about this paper is you don't have to do, you know, it's so pretty. You you don't have to do Japanese theme with with this paper. It's just um. So this next one is not really going to be Japanese themed. I think I'm going to cover the inside, do a little bit on the outside, and then probably pass it through my sewing machine. Oops. I've got tape all stuck to my fingers. I can't get it off. There we go. Hey. Ah. <laughs> get off me. 